Hello everybody, welcome to Drawing with Waffles. I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't been drawing a lot lately. And there's been a few reasons for that, I'm not going to get into them, but I know there's been some tragic news in the family, and I haven't been spending a lot of time by myself, which is usually when I draw, because I don't draw with other people around, it's really difficult for me, because I'm one of those people that... I don't know, if someone, like, walks into my room while I'm drawing something, which actually happened while I was drawing Ariel, um, I, like, I get all tense, and then my hand starts, like, freezing up, and, like, I'm just like, leave me alone. I don't like people watching me draw. It's just, it's weird, because now I have, what, 27,000 of you watching me draw. But it's not, I don't know, it's something about it being live, and someone over my shoulder, and it's just like, I don't know, I, I, I can't handle that. But, um, yeah, I haven't been drawing a lot, and I can tell when I look at this drawing that it's, it's rusty, and there's, like, there's just parts of it that I usually draw a little bit more smooth, and they just look stiff, and stuff like that, and I think it also shows with the pose. Uh, Ariel's pose, I am not, I don't know, I don't really like the pose, but it's one of those things where it's like, well, at least I'm not drawing her with her hand on her hip. I might as well try something new. And I am kind of proud of myself for that. Because it's like, it's not a pose I draw every day. It's something new. And like, it's a new way to draw her arms and a new way to draw her body. And you know, it's just experimenting. And it's it's very, very good for an artist to try something that they don't do all the time. Even if it's not the most flattering pose, it's still a new pose. And I think I have talked about this previously in some other video where... I was like, if I draw one more person with their hand on their hip, you better let me know. And I've been pretty good about it since then. I feel like it was probably, I don't know, last year, late last year when I said that. And I think I've been doing pretty well, not drawing too many hands on my hips. Still, when it's like, when I'm like doing something else and like I have like a sticky note and I'm just sort of sketching while I'm thinking about something completely different, I do, it is just my generic go-to pose where it's like, I don't know what to draw, I'm gonna draw a hand on a hip, it's gonna be fabulous, it's gonna be perfect, it's gonna be the best hand on the hip I've ever drawn. But um, yeah, I think when it comes to like illustrations when I'm planning on finishing them, I need to do something different. So in that way, I am very happy with this pose, I guess you could say. It's still really weird, but I'm alright with it. Um, as for the line art, originally, I've talked about this before too, I've probably sound like a broken record by now, I'm running out of things to say, but um, when it comes to line art, I like really thick line art with flat colors, or I like thin line art with shaded, so like shading within the the thin liner and so with this one I was like oh I just want to keep it simple I haven't drawn in a little while so I'm gonna do thick line art and then I'm gonna fill it in with flat colors um, somewhere along the line I think I was just trying not to think about things and I was just trying to distract my brain from things <laughs> stuff and things and I just started shading <laughs> I don't know <laughs> and so I ended up shading the entire Ariel and Flounder, and I even added like a really cheesy background, and it was really good. It was therapeutic. It was something different. But again, I like thin line art when I do shading like that. <laughs> so it looks a little different. It's not like any of my other drawings, I guess you could say. Like when I drew Alice, I think. Yeah, Alice in Wonderland. That was one of those times when I did very thin line art, and then I shaded everything very softly, and I really liked the way that turned out. This turned out all right, but the thick line art is just a little bit out there. Um, just to tone it down a little bit, I did end up coloring the line art to just better colors. So like around the skin, it's more of a brown line art, and around the tail, it's a green line art. So that just softens it up since I did use a very thick line art. Um, I didn't use a reference at all for Ariel, just because I have drawn her so many times. And that might be why some of the colors look a little bit off to you. It's because I just, I just picked some colors and just went with it. Mostly because, like I said, this drawing was supposed to, it was just very therapeutic and I didn't want to like focus on too much. So I just created the colors myself. Her eyes look a little green here. I just decided to use the same color as her tail, but I'm pretty sure she has blue eyes in the movie. Just want to put that out there because I know someone will say something. People are always mentioning how I color people's eyes wrong, so thought I would just <laughs> blame myself before anyone else has to. <laughs> Um, here's Flounder. Flounder's colors are a little off. I changed them later so they fit his colors a little bit better. Again, I didn't use a reference, so Flounder just looks like a fish to me. I think I got his nose right, and that's about it. <laughs> but I love Flounder. He's such a little guppy. He's adorable. And I love how in Disney Princess movies they always have that, like, friendly animal that they hang out with. 
And I think that's just really fun for children, and I always liked them. They were great. Like, you don't see that in adult movies because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But I think it's just, it's really cool to have, like, companionship that you don't need. You don't need to have a ton of friends. You only need that one close friend, and even if they're an animal, who cares? I mean, that's me. I got a dog. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm really just, like, I'm not here today. let us I don't know who's talking. It's just an inanimate voice, but... Yeah, inanimate, that's not the word. A bodiless, bodiless voice. That's the word I was looking for. Anyway, here I am shading the hair. I spent a lot of time on that. I think I spent more time shading the hair than anything else. Just because I really like shading hair. And it's one of those things that I think if you get it right, it looks really, really good. But it takes a few steps to get to the point where it looks good. So you just have to keep chipping away at hair until it looks good. And I kind of like it. I think it looks very flowy. And then just so that it didn't look so perfect, I added some strands that were sticking out of the liner, which I really, really like to do. I think it just adds that extra something that drawings need, especially when it comes to digital art. It usually looks a lot more clean cut and it's harder to make it look good because if you like mess up a little bit on the liner with digital art, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Whereas with like traditional art, it's even if you do very nice line art and you spend a lot of time on it to make it look good, it still has that sketchy appeal to it. And, like, you don't have to make the line art perfect for it to look really good, in my opinion. And I'm not saying it's easier to make it look good. I'm just saying I really like the way traditional art looks. So it always looks good to me. Whereas, like, with digital art, I think it's because it's my thing that I'm just so much more nitpicky about it. And I want it to be, like, it has to be beautiful. Oh, I'm talking over the tail. <laughs> look at this tail. Okay, I used my sparkle brush that I created. One of these days I'm going to have to share it with you guys. It's just a very simple brush. Or I'll just show you how to make one because it's really, really easy. But I just made my own sparkle brush like probably two years ago now. And I just used that over her tail and I used different shades of green and I had a little bit of purple and a little bit of red. Like reusing the colors of the illustration and like added it to her tail. Because if you look at a fish's scales, it's never all one color. Like they're usually pretty reflective so they're reflecting things around them. And also a lot of fish have different colored scales. And I was really thinking just like the rainbow fish. I don't know if any of you ever read that when you were really little. But like the rainbow fish, like it has rainbow scales. And like each scale has like a ton of colors in it. And that's kind of what I was going with with her tail. Because I really wanted it to look very shiny and scaly without looking gross. <laughs> so I added a bunch of sparkles. And I think that adds like, it's like lights hitting each scale and like shining back at you. So I really like that. That was really fun. And here I am adding my really cheesy background, so let's not really talk about it. But there is some coral, and some, and then there's some infinite sea behind her, and then there's sand. I should have added Sebastian down there or something, but I don't know, that just flew over my head. <laughs> um, and I added some little bubbles around her, because bubbles are really easy to draw once you've drawn a background. All you do is take a really, really light color. I took a very, very light blue and then I just drew a circle and added a dot into the circle and added a bunch of little circles and they just look like bubbles. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see me draw in the future and subscribe if you want to see more art videos. Anyway, thank you guys. I already said that. <laughs> Hope you guys have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!